Hi, my love. This is going to be your birthday reading. So first off, I wanted to say happy birthday to you. Um, I send you all of my love and all of my um, best wishes to you on your beautiful day. Um, a little backstory about birthdays. So I feel like I feel like we have a, a new year, typically where we all celebrate, you know, the first of January as our new year. But I also feel like we have our own personal new year, which is the when we celebrate the day we were born. Um, so on this beautiful new year for you, this reading is to give you some beautiful insight on yourself, but as well as the year ahead. So anytime you hear me saying, you know, the new year, I don't mean January 1st. I mean, literally the new year from the day of your birth through the next, the, that whole entire year. Okay, so <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I made that clear um, just in case there was some confusion with that because I know sometimes, um, you know, that could be confusing. <laughs> okay, so for the reading, I do have a set spread that I'm going to use um, and what I'm going to do is just pull multiple cards just as I feel fit for it um, and then we're just going to get started. So I already have your little birthday candle lit here. Um... Okay, so it's a, let's see, it's a, it's a, it's the Psychic 7 spread, um, but I just use it as a birthday reading. <laughs> anyway, the first, the first part we're going to read for is self, you and your soul. So for you and your soul, I'm going to pull, um, from my earth, from my, um, what's it called? My, um, blah, 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 blah. my earth magic oracle and a major arcana card to see what energy you are working with right now with your birthday So we have lake stillness and we have the high priestess. Oh, I love it. So for you and your soul right now, the energy from this, this birthday, this, this new year you're about to embark on stillness with the lake is asking you to approach this new year in a calm, quiet state of being. Okay. Um, you may be wanting to make major plans. I mean, we all do. We all think about all these major, major, amazing plans we want to make on our birthdays, but I feel like what's going to end up happening is needing a day for self-care, self-love, quietness, um, is going to be an, in, in, is going to be part of the birthday celebration, whether it's the day of or another day. I highly recommend, I'm feeling like the energy of massage or a Reiki healing. I feel like you could really benefit from that. Um, the high priestess coming up with your essence of your birthday is definitely an intuitive hit, okay? I feel like you are definitely embracing that psychic, intuitive side of yourself, embracing the ability to tap in, okay? she's She is um, surrounded by the moon cycles, and that's another thing I feel for you is, is this new year, if you aren't already associating your day-to-day -day with the cycles of the moon, this may be a practice you will want to um, bring into your routine, Um I just feel like something like that would, would go really beautifully with you, especially with this high priestess energy. This birthday is a year of tapping into your intuition and making the right decisions based on your intuitive hits, okay? Um, anytime you feel stressed or you feel like you need to come up with an answer right away, the stillness in the high priestess is almost like that energy of coming to a conclusion in a peaceful state of, of being, in a peaceful mindset, um, tapping into your higher self and asking yourself, what is it that your intuition is telling you versus your ego? This is going to be a year of really tapping into your intuition versus your ego. Okay. I love that. Those are beautiful energies to start your reading with. Um, okay. Let's go into the heart. So your, what your heart desires this year
and I'm going to be pulling from a Rider weight deck, okay? Ooh, that one wants to come out. I feel like I need to pull two, so I'm going to pull two. Okay, this one wants to come out. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> okay, what does your heart desire? So we have the Emperor and we have the Ace of Pentacles. I love it. Um, so the heart's desire, the Emperor is asking you, this one, could this be? I mean, I don't know your situation with love, but if you have a significant other, this could be the desire to be more of an authority in your relationship. A desire to be more, to have more voice. Um, or to have more structure in your love life in general, whether you're in a relationship or not, to have more structure, leadership, to have more of a voice, to have more control in your relationship or with your heart. Um, I also feel like this is to embrace the masculine with love, okay? You being comfortable, one, with the masculine energy, but also comfortable with you placing yourself in a, in a, in a, leadership authority type of a role in any love relationship um that you don't always have to be the person submitted like being submissive that that sometimes your mate will or need to needs to be submissive to you as well I feel like there's an equal like a balance that needs to happen in love for you um so like I said I, I'm not sure if this is um if you're in a relationship or if you're not so I'm trying to I'm trying to read it both ways so that you can, you know, <laughs> so it can fit you. Um, but also I see the ace of pentacles when it comes to your heart receiving abundance in, in different forms. OK, um, this could literally be meeting somebody. All right. So wanting to meet someone, setting the intention to meet someone. Um, this could also be a announcement of pregnancy or having a baby or adding to the family, a fur baby, a baby. This pentacle can reveal anything like that. Um, so I thought I would throw that out there as well, just in case you are in the process of planning. If you are in the process or wanting that in your love life um, to add to the family, whether it's, you know, a baby or it is a fur baby, um, that is also popping up too. That's like a desire for you. I also see, like I said, with the love life structure is important to you. You want something that you feel safe, that you feel secure in. Um, and emperor energy is also very structured with that. So lots of abundance that you want to have happen in the love life and the love department, possibly um, adding to the family or just meeting somebody who has that ability to give to you what you are asking, okay? Um, and then also being able to feel empowered in your own personal role in the relationship where you're not always succumbing to what they want. It's also an equal balance of what you both want in the love life. Okay, so the positives, this is your strength. And then the next one is the negative, a lesson that you need to learn. So I'm going to pull for both. A positive and a lesson you need to learn. <laughs> okay, so for the positives, that was a lot that fell out. And then a lesson you need to learn. Okay, ooh. All right, so for the positives, a chunk fell out, literally. So we have the hangman, we have the nine of swords, and we have the knight of swords. Um, you've come a long way, okay? Mentally speaking, your thoughts, your mindsets, your the way you, you think, I feel like you've come from a background of a lot of worry, a lot of stresses, a lot of um, anxiety, and maybe these are little things that you still tap into um, every now and then. Um, and But what I'm seeing here is with the Knight of Swords, he's facing the Nine of Swords, okay? So I feel like it's almost like he's charging at, he's charging towards those stresses. And I feel like it's almost like you've been able to turn your negatives, your, str your stress points, your insomnia, your anxiety, your nightmares, your worries, all of the above, Whatever it is that that nine of swords is, was representing a part of you, 
you've been able to battle it. You've been able to conquer it, okay? Because Knight of Swords energy is very much all about taking action and um, pretty much like aggressively attacking, okay? And so I feel like that's what's happening here is that you've been able to find a positive in some of your darker moments, um, and that's turned into a major strength for you. You being able to to look at negatives in your life or in your past um, and seeing silver linings to them. It's a huge growth process when we are able to do that. And it's not easy. Um, and sometimes it takes us years to finally see the, the silver lining in an otherwise negative and shitty situation. Um, for me personally, it took me 13 years to, to get to that point. Um, some people can do it in half the time and some people it takes even longer, but it is a big turning point when you can look at literally look at your stresses and everything in the face and attack it and just conquer it. That's a huge strength for you. Um, the other thing is the hangman card popping up your ability to see perspectives, um, in different in different ways. So you're not really like that person that is going to be hot or cold, black or white. You're going to be in the gray area. And I feel like that's a big strength for you. Some people, some family members, friends might find that very annoying and frustrating about you. But I feel like for you, it's a personal strength because it gives you the power to see everybody's situation for what it can be. Um, and you're not judgmental about it. So I feel like hangman energy for being a strength for you is your ability to practice patience and to see things from other perspectives. You could basically place yourself in other people's shoes and see a situation from someone else's point of view, even if it doesn't align with your own personal, okay? So that's a big strength for you as well that I'm seeing popping up. Um, and then for the weakness, which is a lesson to learn your negative, <laughs> we have the death card. Um, so the death card popping up is telling me that, uh, you know, a lesson you need to learn is the lesson of change and sacrifice, the lesson of needing to close one door to allow a new one to open, okay? Um, a lot of times we are afraid of change. A lot of times we're afraid of letting go of something we have once been so stuck on or we're so comfortable with because we don't know, we don't feel comfortable with the unknown. And that's what the death card is all about. It's like if you really want to walk through a new door, a new path, we have to be willing to close something else out. We can't have our cake and eat it too. So that is an ongoing lesson for you that's popping up here with the death card. Um, it's nothing bad. It's just that when you see change on the horizon, it's, it's, it's like you need to be willing to take a risk, take a risk and walk through the doors and see what else is out there. Next we have, um, we have the head, what you show to the world, what you show to the world. And you know what? I think for that, I think I'm going to put, I'm going to pull the Oracle card. Let's pull an Oracle for this. What you show to the world. There we go. Winter solstice reflection. I love it. So what do you show to the world? For one thing, when people see you, especially in a new path that you are, people will often see themselves in you, okay? I feel like maybe a lot of times you set a lot of examples for people and you don't realize it. Um, or you maybe you have a lot of people who tell you, I really resonate with what you said or I resonate with what you do or whatever. There's something that you do that really speaks to the the, whole, the community as a whole. Um, and you get a lot of people to reflect on, on you. They reflect in themselves on you based on your choices or what you're doing in your life. Um, I also feel like um, what you show to the world is also you can go through shitty times like we've seen right here with the nine of swords. You can go through shitty times. You can go through rough patches, but you always come through. And I feel like what you show to the world is, is that people will reflect on that. They will see they have the power to be strong. They have the power to 
to get through things, to get through those challenging times just as, just as well. Um, and I feel like when you put yourself out there and you're transparent, um, that really helps people. So if you've ever doubted that, um, it's actually a beautiful thing that you do. And so I feel like you should continue to do more of that. Um, and maybe this year will be a year where you feel more comfortable to come out of your shadows and really like put yourself out there for everybody to see. Um, let's pull on energy. What you should manifest this new year. What you should manifest this new year. I'm going to pull three cards. Two of Wands, Ten of Cups, Page of Wands. Beautiful. So what you should manifest this year, <clears throat> to me, Two of Wands is one, manifesting some change, okay? Manifesting stepping outside of your comfort zone. So I challenge you this new year like and, and like I mentioned earlier, your new year starts um, the day of your birthday and through that whole year to do something at least once, if not once a month, outside of your comfort zone, okay? Do something that is outside of your comfort zone. It could be as simple as trying something new on the menu at your favorite restaurant or you know, traveling somewhere different or going to the movies by yourself. I mean, little things that are things that you've never done before, okay? Because that's what's going to enhance you and expand you. So it doesn't have to be big life-changing, life you know, stepping outside of your comfort zone, like jumping out of an airplane or something. <laughs> Although if you want to do it, then do it. But I'm just talking about subtle little things once a month you know, and maybe once for that whole year doing something big, big, okay? But if you wanna just stick with like little things, once a year pick something that you can do that is outside of your comfort zone, that is that is gonna allow you to expand and really see the world for what it is, okay? So that's one thing popping up. Um, so another thing to manifest this year, the 10 of cups is to me saying, you know, seeing, appreciate what you have. I feel is what spirit is saying here. Appreciate what you have, looking at the positives in every situation, which you've already been doing, especially with your shadow stuff. Um, but also I feel like is like appreciating what you have. This is the family. Okay. Your family, your relationships, your inner circle, you know, really just counting your blessings. Um, it's so easy for us to look at things that we want to change or things that we wish we had that we don't have. But it's also an amazing feeling to look at the things we do have and to truly appreciate it and be thankful for them. So I feel like that too. Um, this could also be, a you know, moving. This could be relocating. This could be owning a new home. So you never know within this year, especially if you've been like wanting to do something like that. This could be the year that this actually happens. Um, another thing to manifest this year is that happy ending for you. So whatever it is that you've been trying to set your mindset to, if there's a big goal you have in mind, this Ten of Cups can really reveal finding that, you know, happy ending that, um, achieving that end result, okay? And then we also have Page of Wands popping up. So another thing to manifest this year is something new, trying something new, a new course of study, taking a class, learning something, reading books on a new topic, um, expanding your horizons, allowing yourself to be creatively inspired, okay? Um, so really putting your hands in, in, into a project that's really going to make you feel more in tune with yourself and to connect. Um, like for me, I've been wanting to take an astrology course and I feel like I really want to like look for one finally and just do it. So, you know, whatever it is for you that you really desire, something you want to learn or expand on or something that just truly inspires you that you want to do more of, that's what the Page of Wands is about, um, is doing that. So I really challenge you this year to, to do that too for yourself. It's all for growth. And then finally, we have the wish, your future outlook. So let's pull on the crystal angels for that one. <clears throat> and then I'm also going to pull on 
with it. I'll pull from the tarot and from the oracle. I'll just pull one from each. <clears throat> Whoops. Your future outlook. message you just got. I'll tell you right now. Let me just get the cards. Let's do this one. Future outlook. Ooh, okay. Okay, so if you're your future outlook, we got the Sugalite. I think that's how you say it. <laughs> Sugar light crystal, own your divine power, replace codependent people pleasing with assertiveness and empowerment. So a future outlook for you this year is definitely owning yourself, getting away from toxic connections with people and really being your own independent person. Okay. You're going to be breaking free, breaking the chains free from people that maybe hold you down or the need to do so. And also to associate yourself with people who lift you up, not hold you back. Okay. We also have, ooh, we have volcan volcano, volcano, volcano volatility. That eruption is telling me that this is your inner power. Same thing like I was talking about with the page of, of wands. And then you got the knight of wands. You have a lot of fire energy wanting to come out. This is an eruption within self. This is you breaking the chains. This is you setting yourself free. Okay. So a future outlook that I see with the volcano eruption to me is saying you're really going to burst out of your bubble. You're really going to come out um, and be yourself, being your true authentic self. This is going to be a very powerful year for you. This is the year where you no longer allow yourself to be chained down or to be talked to in a, in a way. It's like you're owning your, your independence. Okay. And then we have the Knight of Wands energy, which is so action oriented. This is taking initiative. Okay. This is the year you, you take initiative. This is the year that you, you bring that creative empowerment to yourself. Um, wands is fire. Fire consumes the, the, the fire within the volcano. And then also divine power. You have a surge of power, a surge of, of energy coming through you this year, my love. This is going to be a really, really good year for you to step outside of your comfort zones, to really own yourself to come through and just be your true authentic you. Um, so I feel like you have a beautiful, <laughs> a beautiful birthday coming on. We started from the beginning of your birthday with that stillness card and that high priestess all the way to the end of like literally a volcanic eruption. So you're going to, I feel like that's how you're going to see the process of this new year. You're going to start it off real still and calm. And by the end of it, you're just going to be on fire fire. So I hope you have a beautiful birthday. Thank you so much for allowing me to connect with you and read for you. Um, and I wish you all of the best on a beautiful happy birthday and a beautiful new year, my love. And anyone who's watching, this is a birthday reading. If you would like to book one for yourself, please click the link below, check out my website, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye, my loves.